Hello friends, this video on evolution part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us look at another example of adaptive radiation. So here we are going to talk about the Australian marsupials. So if you talk about these marsupials, these marsupials started as very small creatures but later they evolved into many different species. So they are termed as Australian marsupials because they arrived in Australia around 55 million years ago, a long time back. So at that time, there were no mammals existing in the continent of Australia. So if you look at the variety of uh, species into which they evolved, you will actually you can actually see that they are all diverse, starting from a marsupial rat, which you can see here. Here you have the tiger. Here you have the tiger cat. Here you have the marsupial kangaroo. So this is the mole. So that means you have a variety of organisms, right? So it had even the large animals like the marsupial kangaroo, which you can see here. These were some of the large grazing animals. To you, eat, there were even marsupial lions, which were large predators. So this is how it all started from the marsupials and then it radiated in so many variety of different species. So this is also an example of adaptive radiation. Now there are many close similarities between the marsupials and the placental mammals. Now first of all what are placental mammals? So there were quite a few similarities which were seen between the marsupials and the placental mammals. Placental mammals are those mammals in which for the first time the development of placenta was seen. Pla placenta is that tissue which connects the mother to the uh, baby which is present inside the mother's body. So the development of placenta happened for the first time in these mammals and they were called placental mammals. So how we will look at some of the examples where we will see that how these two were closely related to each other and how do we know that they came from a same ancestor long time back. So marsupials in Australia and placental mammals in North America, they exhibit similarities. So we can see that they both occupy different geographic locations. So one of them in Australia, the other one in North America. But it has been seen that both adopted adapted in similar ways to particular food supply, locomotory skill or climate and also but looking at their behavior and looking at their structure the way they are, it can be assumed that they were separated from some common ancestor millions of years ago. So despite the geographic separation between the two, both produced varieties of species leading to similar habitats with similar ways of life. So we will see what were the various varieties of species which evolved from placental mammals. So in the last slide we saw the marsupials that how different types of species were being formed from the marsupials. So let us have a look here. So, so if you take the example of mice. So whether you consider a marsupial rat or a placental mammal mice, so if you compare both of them, you would see that both of them inhabit the low shrubs and they move around at night in search of food items. They both are also similar in size as well as shape. If you talk about the moles and if you compare the marsupial moles with the placental moles, you would see that both of them burrow into the soil and live there. They eat insects. They have fur over their body which help in movement through the soil. So that makes their movement smooth through the soil. You also take the example of the marsupial wolf or the mammalian wolf, you placental wolf. There also you will see that both of them are carnivorous. They have limb bones which are adapted for running and that is why they are able to run very fast to catch their prey. They have sharp teeth which help in tearing meat and that is why again it is related to their food habit that is they are carnivorous. However, this Tasmanian wolf have become extinct. In fact, the last Tasmanian wolf had died in 1936. So it has become extinct now. But all these uh, marsupial animals which you see, they have a close relation with the placental mammals even though they exhibit two different geographic locations of the world. And why is it? 
So what does these similarities say? It say that they would have shared a common ancestor long, long time back. And after that, they would have started inhabiting different locations. So even after inhabiting different locations, they are continuously evolving and giving rise to different species in that particular location. So what do we get to know from our discussion on adaptive radiation? That species branch out to occupy multiple niches and evolve into multiple species because all the species want to survive. And in order to survive, they try to search out for more options. They try to adapt to get food. They try to adapt to get shelter for themselves. So adaptive radiation is seen to be most successful during mass extinction, so when a species entirely get extinct or when colonizing an uninhabited island, for example, the, of the Galapagos Island. So this that island was earlier not inhabited by uh, the birds. So they came for the first time. So they migrated from some other place due to a storm. They had to come there. And when they came there, so adaptive radiation became very successful with them because there everything was suitable for them to survive and as a result they uh, underwent reproduction very fast so more and more organisms were produced when the number of organisms are more the variety is also more which can cause evolution which can give rise to different species of the organisms so this was all about adaptive radiation thank you please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.